it's match day. West Ham v Luton. Weird one today. It is weird. There's no doubt about it at all. Um, I've been thinking sort of long and hard about this, really, because there's such little importance on the game for us. Big importance for Luton. And I've got to say, I would quite like it if they stayed up. I do think it's the, the fairy tale story, really. Um, but it's been quite interesting listening to a lot of the outside people. I did a big rant about you know, people at Talk Sport and uh, Sky Sports and, and Chris Sutton and all that stuff the other day. And I think certainly a lot of the, I think a lot of the spiky exchanges on Talk Sport are very defensive of David Moyes, have been, probably been explained by the fact that he's now signed for them to work for them uh, during the Euros. They won't have, look, Sky, and Talk Sport wouldn't have found out on the day it happened. There's, and there's no doubt about it. So for the last week or two, that would have been the talk of the office, that basically David Moyes is coming to work here. You can understand that. We're armed with that information. You can understand that if you're working in an office and you know that someone's going to come and be sat there, so in June, David Moyes is going to be sat in the Talk Sport studios every day, as I'm led to believe. If you know that's going to happen, he's going to be sat in the same office as you, of course you're going to say nice things about him. It's human nature. People aren't overly confrontational. They tend not to be. So it would understand why TalkSport have been so biased in their reporting of, of West Ham uh, recently. Um, but they were making a couple of points anyway, and one of them was David Moyes has been very good for West Ham. And do you know what? I just want to give the, the counter um, argument to that. Because, yes, David Moyes has been good to West Ham, but it's this... You always hear it said this way. David Moyes gave West Ham their first trophy in 43 years. Absolutely. And thank you very much. But I will also return with this. West Ham gave David Moyes his first trophy in his career. So I think we've been good for one another. And I think there's so much of that is put on what David Moyes bestowed upon West Ham. Let's have a little bit about what West Ham bestowed upon David Moyes. Because... I, I do I do honestly believe this. At Everton, David Moyes never had it so good as at West Ham. West Ham's the pinnacle of David Moyes' career. It's gonna sound so arrogant. If you're an Everton fan, you're gonna be thinking, oh mate, you know, get over yourself. All right. But let, let me let me make the argument here. Moyes has had at Everton he had the time and the backing. But he didn't have the financial clout. At Manchester United he had the financial clout, but he didn't have the time and the backing. At West Ham, he's done two stints. His second stint has been four and a half years and near and four and about four hundred and thirty million pounds. He's had the time, because because in modern terms, that's a long time. It's a long, long time. Go, all right, not so much. You go back a few years and you go back to Fergie, you go back to Arsene Wenger. They they were all staying, you know, whatever, 20 years, 25 years, or whatever the case was. Four and a half years at a club nowadays is a long, long time. So I would argue at West Ham, he's had the time, he's had the backing, he's had everything. So actually, I think we've been pretty damn good for him as well. He's never been able to have like that that sort of money. For him to be able to go out, not just buy players like Lucas Pakatar and Jared Bowen, who, who are able to basically, you know, the, the assist and the goal in the Conference League final, but actually to be able to, um, to waste money and, and it not matter. To be able to make a, a huge loss um, like like he like he has, if he can't make Felipe Anderson work, no no problem. Thirty six million pound written off, no problem. Um, lose half on on Sebastian Heller. I know he didn't sign him, but um, yeah, no no, no problem. Uh, buy Nikola Vlasic, twenty eight million pounds didn't work out. It's not no problem, but West Ham had such a good budget that he was able to still buy players after that. Buy Skamaka can't really coach him, integrate him into his team. You know, we lose five, six million over a season, goes back, you know, that's, that's, that's okay, there's still more money to spend. Um, you know, we still, he can still, he can lose money on Skamaka, he can still get players in the next season like Caduce and, and, and so on and so forth. You get my point. So I, I think West Ham have been very good for David Moyes and I think David Moyes has been good for West Ham too. Don't get me wrong. I, so I, I just think I want to make it you know, a little bit clear both ways. In, in terms of does the saying goodbye, it's the long goodbye. I I wouldn't be doing it. You know, it's I'm talking if I was David Moyes, because I think if I was David Moyes, I'd be really pleased with the job I'd done, and, and I would probably know that most of the fans don't want me here anymore. So I probably wouldn't be. Um, but you know, but hey, that, that's just me. Maybe he maybe he wants to. Um, I certainly felt it's more been driven by you know the fans that want to say, you know, say a goodbye to him. Um, and thank him. And rightly so. Nothing wrong with that at all. 
Uh, certainly been driven by the club who, who feel that they probably should be allowing him uh, the, the decency to say goodbye, uh, the dignity to say goodbye, however you want to put it. Um, I, I do wonder how much of it is driven by David Moyes himself. I, I does David Moyes, honestly, I'll tell you what wouldn't surprise me. I don't think this is going to happen. But it wouldn't surprise me if his last game he manages is, is today, is Luton. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Is he going to want to go and do Manchester City? Oh, I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I would. Um, look, he, he knows his replacements in, in, in place and ready to ready to go. It's all, all been, you know, it's, it's all been agreed. It's, you know, they're already scouting ahead of next season. Um, so it's going to be interesting. Look, myself and Gio discussed this game on the preview uh, that we did. I would love to see him put some youngsters in today. I'd, I'd love, I'd love that. I think it'd be great for the youngsters as well, and. I think it would probably assist in, in, in the mood, in the ground. I do wonder... No, I guess he's going to say goodbye after the game. I was just wondering if he was going to do anything before. Probably not. Um, it's always a difficult one as well, particularly in that um, in that stadium, like most stadiums. It, it takes a little while to get a beer, doesn't it? So, you know, there's not everyone's not always in their seats. Um, the, you, you know, people need to the, the stop and go. If you've not experienced it, if you've never been to London Stadium, to walk from the stadium to the station, which is which is not too far, you could probably walk it in in ten minutes, fifteen minutes, maybe something like that. But they they've got this lo lo basically a lot like a lollipop man, lollipop lady. Um, they've got a uh, stop and go sign, so it takes because they stop you, they stop you from walking. All the stewards and everything. Um, it can take an hour to walk down to the station. So it, it can make, you know, if, if, yes, I mean, basically, if you've got a three hour journey home, you've basically got a four hour journey home. So I, I don't know, it's, it's, you know, people want to get out of the stadium early and, and you can sort of understand it as well. So I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. I do think a lot of people will stay around to say thank you, but I don't think it's going to be a, 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 a full stadium and nowhere quite looks empty when there's 20,000 fans missing in the London Stadium. It's quite... It's quite apparent, isn't it? So I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm not being a misery guts about it. I, 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 I want it to go well. I certainly don't think it's, it's people saying, oh, I hope he doesn't get booed. He won't get booed. David Moyes will not get booed. Um, I'm, I'm very, very sure of that. So I'm sure it'll go it'll go fine. But um, as for the game itself, look, play the youngsters, Moisey. Give them a go. Um, he may. He probably will go sentimental. We, you know, he probably will play a Bonner and play Cresswell and, and, and players like that and give everybody a chance to... To have a wave and all respect, and I guess it is the end of an era. It, it is, it is the end of an era. There's no doubt about it. Not just for Moyes, but some of the players I just mentioned as well. Um, you know, it's been a really good fun, really good fun European campaign actually, and uh, really enjoyed it. And and that's from somebody I wasn't, I wasn't too keen on it at the start. wasn't too keen on the. I I didn't I didn't think we'd be able to manage it. I honestly I, I was when we first started against Europe. I thought if you got in Europe, I didn't think we had the squad for it. Well, you could still argue we didn't have the squad for it, but we, we managed it anyway. I thought you know we'd be flirting with relegation all the time, and I guess you could uh, uh, you know last season we did, but you know it it was fine. The things I worried about actually didn't happen, and we did win a trophy, so I wouldn't change it for the world. I really wouldn't. But it is the end of an era. You know, a lot of the players now are, are past it. A lot of the players won't suit a new manager. A lot of them are, um, want to leave, or they've not signed contracts, or, or whatever. So uh, I, I do, yeah. I mean, it does feel like the end of an era and a good era, and, and I think we'll we will look back on it, because you do have a tendency to look back on it with rose tinted glasses as well. I think we'll look back on it and, and remember those those really good nights and you know um, the comeback against the Olympic Lyonnais, uh, you know Sevilla, um, you know demolition of Freiburg as well. That was that was pretty impressive, wasn't it? So and obviously the the final itself. So I think we'll look back on it and think, oh, do you remember that time? Remember that time when West Ham would qualify for Europe every, every year? And it will look good. And then there'll be people to say, oh, he was the best thing that ever happened to you, David Moyes. But as I say, you know, history, you tend to look back and, and, and look at only the good things and, um, and not so much the bad things. That's good. That's a good thing, right, in terms of memory. Who wants to just, just remember all the bad stuff? But, you know, it, it certainly won't be telling the full story and things of... But it's it's like the Roman Empire at the end, isn't it? It's it's crumbled. It's crumbled towards the end, and it needs it needs rebuilding. It needs fixing again. And you know, I certainly hope that we'll be in Europe again. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm uh, as for the game itself. Who knows? What's what's he going to do? How's he going to begin to motivate the players? I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure. 
I think it's easy. A lot has been made over the over the years that you know they'd lost the dressing room. Actually, the only the one time I really felt he'd lost the dressing room was very very recently. Um, I, I think there'll be a lot of players that do like David Moyes, and there'll be a lot of players. You know, I don't think all our players are horrible or anything. A lot of them think we'll we'll, we'll have gratitude. I think someone like Jared Bowen will look and say, you know what, thanks, thanks, mate. You know, you, you know, you took me from hole. You had faith in me. You played me all the time. I, I, you know, I've won a trophy. I've got an England cap. And and again, a lot of people will turn round, and it's it's a two way street. I just want to, you know, make this make this point. David Moyes has been really good for Jared Bowen, and I would argue that. But I will give you the counter argument that Jared Bowen's also been very good for David Moyes. So it's it's all it's all round. I think mean, too too often it's as a one-way street that, that um, David Moyes has done West Ham this massive favour. Look, he's, he, after Sunderland, Moyes' reputation w- was on its arse, I'm telling you. And West, so West Ham, good club. Good good club for David Moyes. No doubt about it at all. Um, and anyway, there, there you go. So, uh, <laughs> don't spoke much about the game. We'll speak about the game later. Uh, look, join me an hour and five minutes uh, before kickoff, and uh, we'll do everything. We'll do the pre-match bet, uh, Charlie for the watch along, all that good stuff. Um, right, catch you later.